We are back on Raiders franchise following a week one loss at the hands of the LA Chargers in Los Angeles. And things don't get much easier here as we'll face the Baltimore Ravens on the road again. As I kind of thought based off my exposure in the first rebuild and the one I did on stream that has not made it to YouTube, offense just does seem too easy. Gardner Minshew throws for almost 350 yards in week one. And that's just maybe the way things are going to be to start. Again, I'll change the sliders. Right now, everything is default all Madden. I'll change it to make it more difficult if it gets to that point, right? And we'll see how it goes. The Ravens could be a whole different type of a challenge. Obviously, a lot of good players on offense. Their defense is pretty good too. Maybe not so much in the way of the star power that the offense has now with Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry and Mark Andrews. But they are good on defense, right? Kyle Hamilton is an emerging young player. Marlon Humphrey has been one of the better corners in the league for a while now. But what do we think Brock Bowers can do? 70 catches, 800 yards. It's a lofty goal, but it's doable. He went nine for, what, 126 in week one? Pretty incredible, but that's kind of what I expect. So if he gets 70 catches, he'll earn 12 thousand xp do we not have a yards goal anymore i'm not sure i mean i guess we'll try and contain lamar jackson i don't really think qb contains that good we lose pass rush which we already don't have already but also he gets more accurate in the pocket why would i do this when he can probably just scramble up the middle anyway if we contain i don't know i don't really like contain quarterback scramble so we'll try and defend the medium pass maybe See how that goes. And then, of course, Roquan Smith is their big superstar player on defense. I didn't even mention him, but he's one of the best linebackers in the league, obviously. And maybe we can run at him. He's maybe more of a better cover linebacker than, you know, a, a fill the lane thumping type linebacker. But he's such a good tackler, sideline to sideline type guy. So good in space. He's just a beast. We'll try running at him, I guess. What could go wrong? I don't know. Okay, dislocated wrist for Jackson Powers Johnson. He was somebody who dealt with some injuries at Oregon. Is that just going to knock him out of this week? Fractured elbow for Jake Yohanning. JPJ will miss this week. That's unfortunate. We do have Cody Whitehair to take his place, so we'll be okay. Okay, we're going to start Cody Whitehair at right guard and Dylan Parham at left guard or parham it is donald parham but i think it is dylan parham if i recall correctly we do have upgrades for brock bowers and trey tucker don't mind that one bit and i think i'd like the run blocking to get better for bowers but when you upgrade everything else blocking is one of those things that just does get upgraded along with it so we're gonna go vertical threat hopefully get an upgrade to deep route running as well Ooh, we get plus three to medium route running and an ability slot Meaning that Brock Bowers has at least superstar development, aka probably just superstar development. But that's awesome for what could end up being one of the league's best tight ends. He's an incredible, incredible player. At least was at Georgia. We'll have to see how things go in the league. We'll upgrade deep threat for Trey Tucker. I'd like catching to just get better in general. And it does there with a plus two to catching. Okay, there we go. Devontae Adams. I'd like to get him involved more this week. Only caught one pass last week. Did have more targets. You guys act like I don't ever even look his way. I'm sure I miss him when he's open sometimes, no question. Uh, can't look at everything, and sometimes he's not involved in the progression even. But uh, yeah, I'll continue to miss things the whole series. Welcome to the show. But I'd like to get him more involved. We are somewhat limited with our current quarterback. Gardner Minshew just does not have the arm to hit all the throws I want to make. And I really have liked getting the ball into the hands of Brock Bowers. It's most often a mismatch. DBs are not big enough. Linebackers, like, can't stay with them. So, it's, like, way too good of a return, by the way. I have to figure that out. But this is what I'm worried about. Lamar Jackson concerns me a lot. Had a decent week one, 200 yards, passing, two touchdowns, no picks. Don't even know what he did on the ground, but it could have been exceptional, clearly. And we know we're going to expect a big-time running game. Amari Birdie's going to have to have quite a game. 
And Derrick Henry is just throwing would-be tacklers off. Max Crosby's in there for the TFL, but Derrick Henry is making guys pay already. Even if you manage to bring him down for a loss, he will make you pay in the process. Obviously very strong, but Derrick Henry, his most underrated quality, in my opinion, is his vision and decisiveness as a runner, and he's going to be out in space. And if he can get going, oh, Lord, he's going to be impossible to bring down. This is a momentum-based runner. And I don't mean where if he, you know, has one good run, he's going to turn into a few. But if he goes untouched, good luck tackling him at the second or third level. It's going to be very difficult. And it is a heavy ground game so far. There's some RPO. We're going to be in hell this game, probably, is what's going to happen. This is going to be a disaster. I'd love to get a stop this game. But our offense is going to need to play really, really well. Otherwise, we'll have no chance. A lot of motion being used as well. The Ravens keep getting guys all over the place. And that's going to be a really good throw from Lamar. There's just simply no window there. There isn't. I mean, I guess there is because they found it. If I try to throw that ball, it's a guaranteed interception. I think we can all agree. There's no window there. And it's just completed anyway. It's going to be a disaster game on defense. That is for sure. First and goal for the Ravens. Henry gets the give. We're trying to do what we can to at least eat up a block, even if we can't come in and make the tackle. Second and goal from the three. I honestly think we can run commit. I am slightly worried that, you know, it won't be. Getting a guy in motion. Lamar up the middle. We're all over it. And he still falls ahead. It at least gets back to the line of scrimmage. Third and goal from the three. They're going trips right. Could still easily be a run, though. They're kind of... Spreading us out a little bit. It's a light box. They are going to pass, though. Lamar trying to scramble and steps up into a Tyree Wilson sack. Let's go. That's how you make a stand on the goal line. Raven's going to only have to settle for three. And we did just enough there. We're going to bend a lot today, but it's important that we don't break. Raven's only getting three there is massive for us. Third and one, we have Zamir White in the game. We're really going with a big running back rotation. We actually have really great blocks. Zamir White untouched until about the 40-yard line. Roquan Smith wrestles him down at the 42. But that is an excellent start. And I think we're going to keep it on the ground here. Just try to follow our blockers on that left side. No Jackson Powers Johnson. Maybe no problem. Although probably needed to keep that inside. We got to remember... With our coach goals here, or our strategy, I should say, we're ready to run to the inside. We should get boosts in there, so we can't be afraid to just stay inside and keep it on the ground. Bauer should release here. I think block and release might be the worst thing in the game. Stay blocking for too long, and then when they release, they don't even have any idea that the ball's in the air, apparently. I know it's just going to be a little check down, but it would have been a nice play. Here's third and nine. We only have one route that's even approaching the sticks. That's never good. And we're just going to fire a shot for our best player. And it's intercepted. Tried Devontae Adams. Not saying there was a window there. It's intercepted. Brandon Stevens on the pick. Yeah, good end zone celebration, dude. Ugh. I do coach suggestions to keep it, you know, even more well balanced. So I can try to avoid some of the most overpowered plays consistently. However, I don't love that play call, and I probably should have tried to do something else. There was one route that could have even got us a first down, and it was Devontae Adams. So not really what we want as Lamar tries to take off, but he runs into Cameron Richardson on the nickel blitz, and we're doing a very good job of containing him overall. Not so much defending Derrick Henry, but Lamar's had trouble so far. And that is not the worst first quarter ever. I played way worse first quarters. Now, I will say that I wish I didn't throw a pick, if you guys can believe it. But we've mainly been pretty good. And I think that this could be pretty effective, too. They're going to go empty. I wonder if anyone comes in motion here. Pressure on Lamar, but we contain, and Max Crosby gets his first sack of the year. We are just blitzing the hell out of Lamar, and he is not handling it well. And this actually makes me remember, typically when you play mobile quarterbacks in Madden, if you just blitz them, they have no idea what to do. Absolutely no idea. And I don't know if that's the paranoid in the pocket trade. I don't know if Lamar has that or not. That really isn't even Lamar's style. 
This is a guy who's not run first at all. Like, if you watch Lamar Jackson, it's easy to think because on design runs, this guy is, you know, the most dangerous guy in the open field in the league, maybe. Or right up there. But he's always looking to throw first and foremost. So it's uh, it's interesting when you, you play him and he doesn't really do that at all. Here's first and ten. That's, that's a bold call. I mean, we probably just need to scramble there. Instead, try to rip it to Trey Tucker. Coverage was too tight. Really was no, no, we had no business making that throw. Here's second and 10. Pick up a block. Colton Miller, do something. There's Bowers. Get six. Third and four, play action. Then we're going to go for Devontae Adams. That's a great ball for Minshew. And it's caught on the sideline by Devontae Adams. That's what we need him to do. Sometimes it's third down. You got to have it. Just take a chance. We were obviously intercepted the last drive doing that. But what a ball from Gardner Minshew. And we need Devontae Adams to make big-time plays. That's what he's able to do. Survives the contact. We needed it. We got it. Dylan Lauby into the game, by the way. Again, we're going to have a big rotation of running backs. It's going to be, honestly, mostly Zamir White and Dylan Lauby. Lauby's our third down back. Kind of talked him up a little bit in the last episode. He's not really a big between-the-tackles guy. That's not going to be his ideal role with the team. But as someone that can be basically a receiver out of the backfield, that's what we want, right? And Zamir White is going to be more of the in-between-the-tackles guy. But Dylan Lauby stays out on the field here in gun. And that could be the trend. And we're going to get it out to him. And we'll move the chains. Under pressure. Good block pickup. Minshew's going to get on the move and get another block, an assist from block, uh, Brock Bowers. Maybe Block Bowers. I like that. <laughs> block Bowers. Could work. See, that safety's kind of cheating over to the sideline a bit. I like the idea of just targeting Devontae Adams against press. And he went to cover the middle of the field. Goodbye. Touchdown, Devontae Adams. And we have score the first touchdown of the game. Big number 17. One of the best route runners in the league. He's got such a diverse release package. And, uh, of course, showed you one there. Just kind of powered right through the corner. Wide open. Easy touchdown. Not the best throw. If coverage was tighter, I don't know what we get out of that, but it wasn't. So Devontae Adams does his job, and it's 7-3 Raiders. Oh, it's intercepted to Cameron Richardson off the tip. Ravens going RPO. Lamar just slings the ball out to the flat, and there was a lot of congestion in the area. And the pass was batted up into the air, and the rookie Richardson comes away with the football. Too many cooks in the kitchen there. Look at uh, Aguilar and Flowers running right into each other, creating a problem. And I'll tell you what, I've, I've found that in this game a lot so far. I feel like a lot of the route combos just kind of end up on top of each other more than they typically should with the concept of the, uh, the play. Oh, that's not there. Totally didn't even see Kyle Hamilton. Good catch from Bowers. Jameer White, easy yardage. Uh, uh, offense might be a little easy this year. It might be. Tries to mirror white again. And he fumbles the ball. Maybe it's not too easy. Can you jump on it? The rookie Trenton Simpson seems to be the one who forced it out. And that's the two-minute warning. The runoff just seems so extreme. Here's second and ten. Bowers wide open. I'd love to catch a ball in stride every now and again. That would be cool. And we actually have an injury. Really? Andrus Pete goes down. That's going to bring in the rookie DJ Glaze at right tackle. Here's third down and five. I'd love to get it to Bowers. I think that's going to be the way to do it. There goes Bowers. He's going to outrun Roquan. No, caught at the one. Again, I would love to catch any of these in stride. Otherwise, that's an easy touchdown. And I'm trying to tap it, by the way. I'm trying to get a touch pass out there. I'm trying. That's why I need this college football 25 throw meter to get implemented. It's just way better. You have way more control. There's never anything super weird going on. I'm pretty much always doing what I want to do. So we need it in Madden. It'll happen in some update. But Zamir White vultures the touchdown, finds the end zone, and we are starting to run away from it or run away with it as... 
Andrews Pete going to be injured. Not able to return for the game. Substitute is Andre James. No, it isn't. That's really our starting center. So, okay. But it is 14-3. Going to be in kind of a two-minute offense here for the Ravens. Trying to get points up before the half. Lamar under pressure goes down again. It is to Cameron Richardson. Are you kidding me? Two sacks and a pick. What a game for the rookie. Absolutely crushing it right now. We're going to flip this blitz so we have Max Crosby actually getting after the QB. We'll try to help on this trips. And is that like Rashad Bateman playing inline tight end? It's third and 15. We should have probably called a timeout. But we'll have our timeouts for uh, offense if we end up even getting back on offense. Or maybe a good thing we didn't call the timeout. As the Ravens are going to get a huge chunk play. Down to the 39-yard line. They didn't apparently stay in bounds. Did Rashad Bateman really get out of bounds there? I'd challenge that, but... Okay. The Ravens could really put points on the board here. Allowing them to convert on third and long... Not, not good. Definitely have to clean that up. Trayvon Merrick comes into the box. And they're going to motion over their second tight end. I think it's Isaiah Likely. It should just be play action here. Quick throw to the flat. We're all over it. They will call illegal man downfield on the former giant Mark Glowinski. We'll back them up a little bit. I'll definitely want to accept that. I know that gives them a timeout in a way. So maybe I should have declined it. Set up third and four. But I don't want them to even get close to field goal range. I think this buys us a little bit of time. As Henry is going to get out of bounds to set up third down and six. They still have a couple of timeouts. I'm not sure if those are going to factor in or not. They're going trips right. Mark Andrews alone on the short side of the field. 27 seconds to play. They love their motion on offense. It's Nelson Aguilar. Definitely want to be able to help on him. And down goes Jackson again. We will call a timeout. Our defense is flying after Lamar in this one. We just need to continue to blitz him. And good things are going to happen. Now the timeout there with 23 seconds left is somewhat bold but I think there's a chance we can get into field goal range right maybe not a good chance but a chance is Amir Abdullah is back to return it's a good spin move Amir Abdullah actually gives us decent enough field position it's not amazing but it gives us an opportunity to maybe try and get oh I don't know like a quick corner route maybe or a post up the middle and Potentially in a field goal range. I'd like to throw out to Brock Bowers. But if we can hit Adams up the middle of the field. Split the safeties if they're in like a cover two. That could be good. But Bowers is wide open. We got to hit that. He's actually going to break a tackle and get out of bounds. Which is critical to our success here. That's why Bowers is so dangerous. I mean that's just. Did it look like he had any business being covered by who he was being covered by? It was so wide open. I actually want Jacoby Myers to clear out here. And then we'll maybe hit Adams underneath. We're probably more playing for a field goal here. But... Uh, that's tough. Right now, it's a 58-yarder. We have four seconds. This is dicey. I just don't love a 58-yard field goal. I'm going to be honest. We're going to try to line it up and just get an extra yard or two. This is dangerous. I get that. And we're going to go down, timeout. Tried to give ourselves up. They really, really cleared out the field there. But we are going to make it a more manageable field goal. 53 yards, I think, is much more makeable. Do have a little bit of wind. And we got a little bit too much power on it, but the accuracy was good in the end. 17-3. What a first half. It looked ugly at first, but as I said, I think all Madden with default sliders might just be a little bit too easy this year. The Ravens, it seems like the recipe for success to beat them is just Blitz Lamar. They don't really have an answer for it. This video is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. They have season-long picks right now, and I like the value on quite a few of these. You can use code BENGAL on Underdog Fantasy. You can get a 50% deposit match, but here's this. Instead of just a chance at $250 in bonus cash, you can now receive up to $1,000 in bonus cash. If you're a high roller, any deposit $2,000 or more is capped at 1000 But I feel like I like where some of these... 
these numbers happen to be. Josh Allen, 27 and a half passing touchdowns. Obviously, he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, and maybe losing Stefan Diggs could hurt this production, but Allen's kind of exceeded this number, and I have no reason to expect that he's going to do anything different. Like, I get no Stefan Diggs, but 37, 36, 35. Last year's 29, but I have reason to believe he's going to bounce back more than take a step back. Tyreek Hill is just an animal. I think he could certainly exceed 1,435 and a half receiving yards. And then I've got Jalen Hurts lower on passing touchdowns. Yes, I am a hater, but also Jalen Hurts has never exceeded that in his career. And the Philadelphia game is just so predicated on running the football. You bring in Saquon Barkley, I'm not sure that's going to change. But there's so many different season-long picks you can go ahead and put in. When you use code BANGLE again, you get that 50% deposit match. But also, instead of $250 in bonus cash, you can now receive up to $1,000 in bonus cash. Use code BANGLE, make some picks, and send them to me on Twitter. I want to see what you guys are picking. I want to make some money too. Also, you know what's interesting? They just stopped running the ball with Derrick Henry. Like, I get it if you're down two or three possessions. There were not. They were not. And they still are on, like, the edge of that, right? 17-3. You're two touchdowns away. You don't have to go full pass heavy. Even in the third quarter, you don't have to do that. Especially when it was working. Just running the ball with Derrick Henry. I just don't really want Lauby to be our main back here. So I, that might end up making me put... Is Amir White as our third down running back? I don't really like Lauby being on the field as our main back. I like him as a player. Again, I can't say that enough. I really do like him. But, and we are throwing the ball to him a lot, and he's fumbled. It's recovered by Baltimore. Adafe Owe falls on it. Multiple, what back do I trust? I mean, Madison's coming in, I guess. Uh, we have fumbles for Zamir White and Dylan Lauby. That's going to be it for Lauby today. They're going to run the ball. Can we stack and shed, please? No, it's a Derrick Henry touchdown. Okay. I mean, unbelievable speed. We really never even got that close to him. Can we take another look at this? Barry just kind of slowed down there. Did I switch onto him and slow down? Not intentionally. Okay, well. Touchdown Ravens, and it's a touchdown game. All right, we will see more Alexander Madison. It's early in the season. It's going to be running back by committee. We really haven't necessarily said one or the other is going to be the definitive starter for the entire year, right? It's going to be very much of, you know, we'll see how you play and we'll make decisions based off that. Madison deserves a shot here. Zamir White, I obviously didn't like that he fumbled, but hasn't really played too badly in this game. And I'll tell you another thing is that Lauby was pretty good as well, but you can't fumble. It's just when you run a lot of gun which coach suggestions is pretty much telling me to run gun every play. It's the third down running back is your main back every single time, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, honestly. But that's okay. Like I, 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 it does make sense to me, but it also doesn't. Because I get a third down back is not just on third downs, right? It's your best pass protecting and receiving back. But also, like, I don't really want them on other downs. We're going to take a deep shot. It's going to be severely underthrown for Jacoby Myers because it was a bullet instead of a lob, even though I tapped the button. Again, I hate this passing. I tap it. It never does what I want. I don't know if you guys have the same problem. I do. So, placement and accuracy, I, maybe that's just not what I want. Leaves accuracy to be determined by player ratings. Sure, I'll do that instead. That seems closer to what I want, even though it's not the actual meter from College Football 25, it seems closer to what I want. I don't want a bullet pass for every throw. I don't. Make a play. Trey Tucker diving catch, are you kidding me? What a play. We had the out open initially. We held it for too long and then just gave Trey Tucker a shot. Got a little bit dicey in there. That could have been picked, but Trey Tucker makes an incredible play. Try to find some blocks with Madison. Really never really developed. Say really again. Can I say that enough? I said I said it twice, like back to back. Learn to speak. Second and eight. Play action. Linebackers don't bite. Over the top. Adams! Can't make the play. That's a really good single high safety. Marcus Williams, I thought we could throw over the back of him. I'd take the chance again. I know his responsibility. We just said our guy was better than your guy. 
And it turns out he it wasn't. Because Adams can't go up and get it. And maybe with a super elite quarterback, we're able to make that throw. Is Minshew going to be able to just get the first down? In real life, that's not a first. It's where you start the slide, not where you end up. But here in Madden, it's where you end up. Which I'll take. No complaints there. Get up the middle. Zamir White. We'll take six, maybe. I honestly think I'm just going to force the ball to Brock Bowers. I think that's probably what happens here, even though he doesn't seem like he's going to be open. He's not. Quickly to Madison. Get up the field. Turn up the field. I'm in a 30-second animation. We're going to have to take our points here, unfortunately. I like points, though. Points is good. Two-possession game. <laughs> but, uh... Obviously, we wanted to finish that drive off with a touchdown, and it was a pretty good drive. And Madison's open with an opportunity to turn up the field. He was just not letting me, really, is the uh, the thing with that. And so, okay, I didn't know if you just held it down completely. It would just give you, like, the too much power thing. It actually reverts to no power. That's interesting to know. But they had better returns when we kicked it for real, so I'm really not even too mad with that. And we're always going to need help tackling Derrick Henry. Divine Diablo can't do it, but gets the help to bring him down. Second and nine. Again, we want to keep blitzing. Let's just get Cloud Flats out here. Play action. In space. Andrews, one hand catch on the ball thrown behind him. And he's able to keep running in stride. That's interesting. That must be nice. Maybe now with a different passing, though, I could actually have that happen for once. That would be cool. Yep, great change of direction from Henry there. Wild. Fourth quarter, here we go. Get to the outside. Andrews brought down. Time, not really too much of a factor at this point with the Ravens now onto our side of the field. It's just going to be more about, you know, limiting their damage. We don't want them to score. But it's going to be tough to limit their damage when they're wide open like that and we take terrible angles to the... What, or what would end up being the ball carrier. Likely throwing a punch at Marcus Epps. Get him out of the game. Wild he can get away with that. Not an overreaction. More motion. Using Derrick Henry as a, as a receiver. He was actually wide open, but Brandon Facey son comes in. Makes the pass breakup happen there. And we'll see what we can do. Under seven minutes. Okay. Some motion. Merrick diving attempt. Third and ten. Andrews in motion. A lot of motion being used by the Ravens today. And it really is going to, you know, tell them what type of coverage we're in. It's Jackson on the move. How is that a broken tackle? How is any of that possible? Don't tell me Max Crosby's hurt. He's holding his right shoulder. Maybe even his right wrist now. And he is headed to the locker room. That is not a great injury for us to get. That is one of our best players. And that brings in Tommy Eichenberg off the edge. No. Bring in Koontz, please. Oh, Merrick, big hit. We got to blitz Lamar. Got to blitz Lamar. Why would Tommy Eichenberg... Well, because it, it brings Malcolm Koontz inside. I prefer multiple interior defensive linemen at that point. As Jackson will run. Change of direction. And look who it is making the tackle, by the way. Torn Labrum. No, it was... Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that, I mean, dude, oh, God. That's our best player. That, that is our best player is now out for a significant amount of time. Touchdown, Ravens. I can't even focus. I mean, it, it's beyond just one game, right? Not the injury, but I mean, like, it, it's bigger than, I, my, my feelings are bigger than just what happened on that play. How do we recover after the the Max Crosby injury? It's, it's going to affect, I mean, at least, probably what? At least eight weeks? It's a pretty serious injury. Damn. Okay, well, Amir Abdullah down the sideline. Daryl Worley in pursuit. And Board ends up knocking him out of bounds at the other 14. I can't even get excited about it. Max Crosby's done for like the year. What a return though, but dude, I can't catch a break. My best player. Give me Bowers. He's open. What a throw. Touchdown. 
It's an easy drive. We get those points right back. Yeah, go go fight the, the female ref. Is like, dude, get away from me. Bauer's like, no. Which hopefully he stays on the straight and narrow, and that clip is never used out of context. The BB stands for Brock Bowers, not Big Ben. Trying to cover everybody, but everything was pretty much open. I was going to say that Lamar pretty much went to what I thought to be the worst option of everyone out there. But it is Derrick Henry. If you can get the ball in his hands, he becomes a real, real problem. Five minutes to play. Time now becoming a factor for the Ravens. Looking for our first win of the season. I think we're going to be able to hold on. I do. Famous last words, maybe. Lamar goes down. Football comes out. Lamar falls back on it. I think Tyree Wilson got in there. Second sack of the game. Jarred the football loose. Lamar able to scramble onto it and keep the Ravens' dreams of winning this game alive. But Tyree Wilson was the one who got into the backfield. Really, really nice play. And we've had a couple of young players really show out in this one. DeCameron Richardson is one of them even though we can't bring down Derrick Henry one-on-one -on -one in the open field. And Tyree Wilson's another, and we need him to really play well this year, and now more than ever. Max Crosby going down, it really is next man up. I wanted to utilize our great depth with Kuntz, with Wilson, and with Crosby, obviously. But now, obviously, we're just going to have to lean on those two, Kuntz and Tyree Wilson. Best kicker of all time, Justin Tucker's kick is off the upright, no good. That might do it for the Ravens. From the other side of the 50s, insane. But Justin Tucker had the leg for it, did not quite have the accuracy. And again, that could be the game. 27-17, we get the football back from midfield. A touchdown certainly ends it, but we're going to take time off the clock. And that is, that's going to be a factor at this point. We just can't fumble. Okay, so they're defending the run pretty well at this point. That's okay. We are taking time off the clock with a two-possession lead. That's the number one thing right now. We're going to bring it down to the two-minute warning, hopefully. But also pick up the first down. There's Jacoby Myers for the first time. He's going to survive a Kyle Hamilton shot. And I feel like we really haven't thrown to Jacoby Myers very much at all in this one. But we really haven't thrown to anyone... Bowers has a few catches. Devontae Adams, maybe a few catches. I feel like Dylan Lauby actually might be on top of the team. I just feel like despite having 27 points, we really have not controlled the ball for very long. I feel like our time of possession is not that crazy. I don't know. It's been kind of a weird game. But the result looks like what I want it to be as we'll face another third and 10. But again, this is all fine. As long as we make the Ravens use their timeouts, there's just really not a lot of time left in this one. Third and 10. I think we're just going to go for Bauer, see what he can do. He actually is going to get the edge there and set up fourth and inches, which we will be going for. Fourth and inches. A first down ends it. Play action in this spot is bold. I think we just try to run. Just follow our blocks. Michael Mayer set it up. Back up the middle. Zamir White. First down. Ravens call their final timeout. And that should be about it. 146 on the clock, no timeouts. Guess we'll knee the ball here, kneel it down. I think a kneel is okay there, just because we're up, you know, two possessions with this amount of time left. I mean, running the ball there obviously is asking for a fumble. But that should do it. One more kneel down, and we will be victorious. One and one. We go into Baltimore and beat the Ravens. I mean, it really doesn't get a lot more challenging than that. And we really can't be too upset about it. So it's so annoying with Chew Clock is like, oh, fourth down? That's okay. Not going to do it anymore, even though you have it in your settings. I've complained about that at length ad nauseum. But that will do it for this game. One and one, our first win of the season. I think you guys are going to agree with me that all Madden's just a little bit too easy. Now, we could not stop the Chargers when we were on defense. The Ravens were not very difficult to stop. We just blitzed Lamar. He did not handle the blitz well at all. And did we even mention Justin Matabike the entire game? Do we mention Adafi Owe or David Ajabo 
or any of these big time players in the front seven. Kyle Van Noy, if you want to even include him in that mix. Maybe not so much of a big time player, but they didn't come up. We had plenty of time. We had a really balanced attack, I would say. Minshew goes 15 for 22, two touchdowns, did of course have that pick. Devin Leary even got into the game. Does, do you, I, I didn't notice it, which is not shocking. I missed so many things. I'm just, I'm paying attention, but I'm also, I'm trying to do the video, so I'll, I'll miss things, right? And I, guess, I don't remember Devin Leary ever coming into the game. Tamir White, I 13 for 44, 3.3 per carry, touchdown fumble, a weird game. Minshew had a couple of scrambles that were good. I mean, Madison maybe fighting to get back to that RB1 spot. Bowers goes 7 for 84 with a touchdown. Devontae Adams, 2 for 53 with a touchdown. But again, I'm sure I'm not throwing it to him enough. But here's what I'm going to tell you guys. Does it matter how we do it as long as we do it? And then I get, well, just trade him then. No, I like having him on the team. It's nice to have a big-time wide receiver one. It is. But they're not always the focal point. We're getting the rookie Brock Bowers involved. And I like that. On defense, I mean, game ball has got to go to Cameron Richardson, right? I mean, what a performance. Two sacks, a pick. Also two sacks for Tyree Wilson, who also forced a fumble. We didn't recover it, but... I mean, the young guys were playing like crazy. Max Crosby also had two sacks, and that's going to be his total for the year, I would bet. We don't know exactly how long he's going to be out yet, but it's going to be probably too long. Devin Leary threw the touchdown pass on the slant. That's why I didn't notice it. I was on another planet thinking about, oh no, Max Crosby's done. Our season's over. To Cameron Richardson with a skill point upgrade here, we're going to go... I always like doing slot to upgrade man coverage in the past. So we're going to go into that. Plus two man coverage. We'll take that. That's going to be 73 man, 73 zone. Press is already pretty good. Obviously a really good athlete. So I like what we have going on with him. Man to man upgraded to a 72 overall as an archetype. But the injury man, come on. Only four weeks for Max Crosby. He's a tough guy. I know that, but... Four weeks seems okay. That's really not too bad. And by the time we simulate, it's going to be three weeks. So, again, could be a lot worse. Not what we wanted, clearly, but could be a lot worse. It'll be back in three weeks. We get Jackson Powers Johnson back for this next game as well. That'll do it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Regional Focus Scouting will take place in the next one. We'll get maybe a better update on some of these players. And with College Football 25 out, maybe we even see some game film. You know what I mean? If you've never seen the series before, or my series, could be fun. Stay tuned. See you in the next one. Take it easy.